So remember in my Metroid Prime port for support, I did say this. We all know that at the end of the day, Prime Trilogy will come on the Switch, so I think right now is a good time to be talking Metroid. <laughs> Here we are in 2023. Metroid Prime Remaster is absolutely upon us. I'm completely not shocked, but I'm still extremely happy to be reviewing this, and you guys have been asking me non-stop to talk about the Switch copy. Here you go. So what is this Metroid Prime Remastered? To put it very simply, it is a severely updated hybrid of features on both the GameCube and the Trilogy to give you one definitive compact version that is pretty much perfect. Yeah, it does have one or two very minor flaws. We'll, we'll talk about that. You boot up the game, everything's fine, and you have this beautiful 16 by 9 menu that looks exactly like the GameCube version. I have no idea what Sorcery Retro Studios has made, and it's actually even more fluid than the original on the GameCube. The original Metroid Prime Trilogy actually condensed everything into one menu. So this menu was completely axed and eliminated, but to see it brought back in 16x9, completely remade, so you can enjoy is just nothing short of a dream. You can also access extra features, which we'll go into a little bit later, a new game and also sound options. There's still a lot to uncover here, but we'll go into that later. The main takeaway of this game is the graphics, and the objective is this. It is to give you the exact same Prime experience you remember in both level design and gameplay, but the big updates, of course, are the graphics, the engine, the lighting, and to the sound for some degree. This is built on Retro Studio's latest engine. They imported the entirety of Metroid Prime 1 into this new engine, and it's not Unreal, it isn't any other third party, this is a proprietary uh, engine that was made by Retro Studios. Us conspiracy theorists could say this is what Metroid Prime 4 looks like, but obviously I'm getting ahead of myself. And I'm detracting from the point. As soon as you just boot up this game, the lighting just absolutely strikes up with that beautiful starry, spacey sky. And you can really start to see the way some of the light effects work in this game. They're pretty much all brand new, and it significantly improves the lighting that the original one brought. Maybe one or two caveats, but we'll see. Great example right here is the beginning area of the frigate, and then you can actually see some of the orbs right here, and you can see that beautiful, nice glow, and the way it's kind of slowly bouncing off of the metal, and also a little bit on the arm cannon to a certain degree. You can also see a really cool detail on Samus's arm cannon, where you can see it start to pulsate up and down, and that glowing effect is also bouncing off of her arm cannon something that we never saw in the original GameCube release. These kind of lighting effects affect the entire game and it really makes that game stand out so much. If anything, it kind of does remind me of the cinematic trailer that did come out for Metroid Prime 1 all those years ago and it looks significantly closer to that than the original release. I think that's kind of cool and maybe I'm interpreting that into my kind of opinion, but I still kind of like that influence nonetheless. I think 90% of the people will have no problem with this, but the other 10 stupid little picky people like me might have one or two little gripes. There are certain areas that because of the new lighting system, it kind of removes this LUT-like filter. To make sense, I'm going to use the Hive Totem right here when you're fighting against it. In the GameCube release, you see this very green LUT hue that's actually surrounding the entire perimeter of the arena. With this new lighting system, it's actually completely removed, but most likely because of the way the new lighting system is implemented. There are some areas of the game that do use these little filters, but case in point, the new lighting system is significantly better and easier to use, and I'm just being a little bit nitpicky, but you know what? I did want to say that just so you are slightly aware. Okay, the textures and the models. That's that's the biggest takeaway that you can get from this. I've covered a lot of remasters on this channel and it kind of gets to a point where you kind of see the same thing and you think a certain remaster is pretty good because it uses a nice implementation of AI upscaling to make its game look pretty decent. Retro Studios did nothing like that. This is nothing that uses AI upscaling and if anything, all of the textures have been completely redone the models are all brand new. There is some new detail that we've never seen before. Right here, you can see a little comparison between both Samus's helmets, and you can see the depths of the cracks that are in Samus's helmet, and that was something you've never seen before. It was just a simple outline, but now you can see there is depth inside of the crevice. Even walking along here on the Chozo Ruins, you'll see a significant amount of detail right here on some of the rock formations, the sand as well, and even some of the Chozo hieroglyphics. This was a amount of detail we couldn't get on the GameCube. 
but to see that Retro Studios has went back, redone everything, make sure that the game looks even better than the original while still having the exact same art style that makes the Prime what it is. It's nothing short of legendary. To my eyes, the audio sounds significantly better than the original due to less compression, and I'm gonna assume that Retro Studios has the original assets in terms of the music, the sound effects, and everything, because they do sound significantly uncompressed. There is a broader sense of dynamic range that I don't really remember the original one having. The sound effects are also reminiscent of the Metroid Prime 1 trilogy release, and what I mean by that is that some of the sound effects, like the caution when you're getting near the water, or scanning, don't sound like the GameCube release, but rather are the updated sound effects that are on the trilogy. It's a very small thing to know, and you know, it's not gonna change people's opinion, but I think it's a good thing to know that it is a little different from the GameCube release, but it seems like it's using a lot of the Prime trilogy as a little bit of a basis, if that makes sense. Other than that, there has been little to no change in the audio and sound effects, and that's a good thing because Metroid Prime does a great job when it comes into atmosphere, sound design, how it integrates it with the character roars like right here with the Parasite Queen. I think Prime 1 is severely underrated when it comes into its sound design. But the treats haven't ended there. We have four brand new control schemes. The first one is the dual stick, using both dual sticks like a traditional modern FPS. It's not a bad way to play the game, and it does breathe a little bit of new life if you wanted to go through that. There is a hybrid that allows you to use a bit of the dual stick as well as classic, so it does integrate that if you like that. There's also the original classic which is also using the GameCube format, and I'll get into something in a bit. And finally, there's the pointer, which uses the Joy-Cons to aim very reminiscent to the original trilogy. So you have not one, four different options to play Metroid Prime. So there is no excuse for anyone that says that Retro Studios left out control schemes that were in the original. This is the definitive control scheme experience. And I'm not done there. You can play with GameCube controllers, to an extent. I posted this up to my Instagram story, and what I'm trying to say here is that if you have the original Wii U, Smash Brothers adapter, or any other thing that allows you to integrate GameCube controllers into the Switch, it'll use no problem. But there is a significant amount of problems with that. The controls aren't mappable, and because the GameCube lacks a minus and a plus button, you won't be able to get into the standard menu that you can. The map, unfortunately, is not mapped to Z, if anything, it allows you to actually aim your arm cannon, and the start button brings your map. So using the GameCube controller itself, there's no way at all to get into the home menu, to get into the prime menu, you're kind of stuck there. So that's something to note. But other than that, this feels exactly like the GameCube experience. And personally for me, this is my way to play prime. There's no other way that really helps other than that. I didn't forget about the extra features either. Going back into the main menu, there are something that's called the extra features. This brings back the original concept art of the game, some of the gallery options, and when you play through the game, you have those unlocked as well as time goes by. So most like when you're scanning characters, when you're scanning creatures, those will be added to that and you'll be able to see that experience. There is one thing that I am very sad that's not in this and that's the fusion suit. Obviously you can't use Game Boy Advance connectivity with your Switch. So for some reason, the fusion suit isn't included either. So there's no way you can play that in any way, shape or form. The original Metroid NES ROM that was in Prime 1 has also not been in this release. I don't know how much that'll affect people's decision, but it is worth noting if you're really looking for something like that, but it's not here. Sorry guys. But despite those three very, very tiny nitpicks, this is probably one of the best remasters, if not the best remaster I've seen in recent memory. I know I've covered things like Chrono Cross or I've covered Shin Megami Tensei, where I thought it was pretty solid and it did have some significant flaws, 
but this is one release where not only did they go above and beyond i don't think there are remasters that really retexturized everything that kept everything exactly how it was it's just a great experience man if you really love the original prime like myself it feels just like it did back in 2003. I don't think you can say that pretty often. But what do you guys think? How are you going to be playing Prime Remastered? Do you really think this is worth playing on the Switch? Or do you want to go to the original releases on the GameCube and the Trilogy? Let me know in the comments below so we can have a good discussion. Thank you guys so much for being really patient. I really did want to make an update with this video because a lot of people were asking me about the trilogy because I did review the GameCube and the trilogy. So I thought I had to update this title and I'm so passionate of Prime. But if you want to see other videos that I've done right here, you can see everything that I've done. But also a huge thank you to the YouTube membership and Patreon folk for taking the time to support the channel. It really means so much to me. It allows me to make more content for you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you very soon.